but only for your good, only for your mercy, only for your love, Father. Father, we need you right now. We are in dire need, Father, more than ever of your love, of your compassion, Father. This world is crying for it. Our nation, our youth, we are in need of your love, Father, your touch. Father, we need right now for you to mend the hearts of people hearts that have been hardened or broken, Father, those right now that don't know where to turn, Father, those right now that are hurting others because they forget that you exist, Father, because they choose to ignore, Father, that you exist and you can make everything well, Father, and that everything is well, Father. Lord, Father, we thank you that we were able to lay our heads down last night and wake up this morning to open up our eyes. Oh, how grateful we are for that, Father. We do not take that for granted. For every step, for every breath, Father, we were able to to take. We thank you for that, Father. Right now, Lord, there are families right now that are suffering due to the crime or hurt of someone else, Father. We need for you to comfort them, Father. Right now, they are in a weak state of mind, Father. They are confused. They don't know where to turn, Father. They are in need right now, Father. More than ever, they need you. Lord, I ask that you don't leave their side. Protect them, Father. Send your angels, Father, to help them, to heal them, to con give them comfort, Father, right now, because they are lost, Father. We are lost for words for what is happening in this world, but we know everything is in your hands, Father. We know that all of this is happening because you know it would happen. It's already been written, Father. It's already be been predestined, Father. So, Lord, we stand here as soldiers, Father. Give us our assignment. Let us know how we can go out there, Father and help. Let us know how we can go into our communities, into our neighbors, uh, neighborhoods, Father, and make a difference and make a change and make it aware that you are here. You are here forever. You are here to stand firm before us, Father. Yes. Lord, thank yes. you again. Thank you again, Father, for your compassion that you have poured upon this nation, for it could be far worse. But, Lord, we ask that you forgive those right now who are trespassing against us, against us and other people, Father. We are asking for forgiveness for this world. We are asking for forgiveness, Father, for those who are cold, for those who are evil, for those who are looking to harm us, Father. We are asking for forgiveness on their behalf right now, Lord. Father, we are asking also that you continue to touch those innocent lives of kids that are being lost, the innocent lives of people right now that are out there being lost, Father. We are asking, Father, that you give us hope as intercessors. When we see these things, Father, sometimes we want to turn away. Sometimes we lose hope, Father, but we know that you exist. You have a reason. You have a right. And, Father, we are not going to question you because you are almighty. Jesus Christ, we thank you again for taking on that pain, for enduring that suffering, for enduring that embarrassment for us, for humanity. And because of that, we are still loved. Because of that, we know we can love one another. Because of that, Jesus Christ, we know that we can forgive one another and love still exists between us. So, Lord, we ask right now that you continue to meet us at our very point of need, Father. You know what every intercessor on this line is encountering. You know what it is that we are battling, Father. You know what it is that we are asking. You know the petitions, Father. You know their hearts, Father. So I'm asking, Father, you touch them, you heal them, you bless them. You continue to let them know, Father, that you are still here with us and you, have, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we thank you right now for the word that is about to come forth, Father. Let it uplift us, Father. Yes. Not one step, Father. Let it not be a word of man, but let this word be your word, Father. Let it touch us, Father. Let us take these words, Father, and pour it into someone else's ear and into their heart, Father, because someone needs to hear what is going to be said today. Father, we thank you for your love again. We thank you for the compassion. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for your patience, Father. As we know, we are not perfect, but we will forever pray. And we will remain faithful and hopeful in your name. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. If you are on the line and you are feeling the power of God flowing through you and believing that anything is possible to them that believe, I want you to shout glory real quick. Glory. 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 See, the beauty is we need to have faith, beloved. And yes, I I was hearing, Sister Margaret, you were praying about how, you know, this senseless killing has happened in uh, Cleveland and how people are just sharing the video and they're, uh, you know, really 
concerned and even I've even seen some Facebook friends of mine saying if you find him make sure you take him out and I wanted to just kind of give you guys a little insight on the reality of the circumstance because this is going to be what I consider a faith building moment the problem with murdering a person who has been designated a murderer it doesn't get rid of the systemic issue which is senseless killing okay because senseless killing or murdering is nothing more than an idea mm -hmm. and unfortunately uh, sister marguerite you and i cannot do away with murdering by simply killing or a physical act we cannot get rid of that idea that way there was an old movie that used to be on t uh, that came out years ago called V for Vendetta and V for Vendetta at the end of the movie he gave his last little monologue and he was saying that he, he, they were asking a question because they were shooting him and they said why won't you die he said because beneath this exterior beneath what you see is more than just bones blood vessels right and flesh but it's an idea and ideas are bulletproof mm. and that's the reason why if you look at each and every president we've had, whenever they wanted to enforce their rule, their idea was to use the military might to scare or to kill or to remove uh, regimes so that they can bring the type of change that they want. And the reason why that never worked is simply because you cannot kill the idea or the viewpoint or the perspective of a people. You can only convert. And that's the reason why some of us today have things that are on the table that we have been believing God for. Uh, Sister Marguerite, you may have been believing God for peace, and some other people may have been believing God for finances. Other people may have been believing God for relationships. But until you convert your current mindset from need or want to a place of confidence that this is something that God will provide for you, you will constantly be in the want. Conversion of mind must happen. Somebody say conversion of mind. Conversion of mind. Conversion of mind. Until we think differently, we will not produce differently. That's why every time we get into a situation where we feel threatened or we feel like we're going to be taken out or there's something bad going to happen to our property or to our loved ones, we call law enforcement and law enforcement enforcement all they do is then capture the person or they may take them out on site but yet you still will encounter another point in your life where you will feel the same danger why because law enforcement can only take care of what they see or understand to be the issue however until we convert the idea of threatening and of danger we will constantly deal with the same issues but in different forms and so that's why today, if you got all the money you needed, then you would have an image problem. Then if you got your image in order, then you'll have relationship problems. Because we have to convert the true issue that's at the heart of every matter. And it's this idea of sin. The idea of sin is separation from God or anything that is opposed to God's will. And so we will exchange God's perfect plan in our lives for a temporary fix. And so now what we find ourselves looking for, Sister Marguerite, throughout life is not God's perfect and profound plan, but what makes us feel good for the temporary moment. Mm -hmm. That's the real issue. Because I promise you, right now, everybody's crying about what's going on in Cleveland. But just give them two more days. Let Trump sign some new executive order, right? Let there be something new on the flag. Let there be a flash flood down in Florida. And all of a sudden, you won't hear anything about Cleveland. Yeah, you're right. Think about Syria. We were concerned about our government bombing, and that was just last week, but we forgot all about them. Hmm. You, you, can you remember when things were happening in Orlando and in Paris, we would see all these memes and all these things saying, pray for them, pray for that. And then... Two days later, we went back to sharing videos of two black teenagers fighting. My God. Why? Because this is the society we live in. What fulfills me right now, but not so will be the church. 
The church will be not that way. The church realizes, you and I, the body of Christ, realizes and understands that there is a perfect plan that God has in motion, and this is yet still a part of it. And so what's our role? What's our tangible role, Pastor? Well, let me help you. Number one is to change our thinking. Be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be renewed in your mind. Transform your mind, your thinking. Renew your mind. Don't look at the situation and allow the comments on your page or allow the people around you to determine what's true and what's false about this event. Number two, believe and have confidence that God can give you the peace, the protection, and the provision that he's promised you. Amen. Because, yes, you are very, very right. You were very accurate when we were talking, Sister Margaret. Yes, it is very possible that situations like this can make you feel some type of way if we don't put it in proper perspective. It is very possible. But if you and I will just reassert our roots in our faith and say, God, give me your perspective. Yes. Give me your perspective because I know how I feel. I know what I see. I know what I'm hearing. But you have to tell me, is it true or is it false? Because how many times have you and I encountered somebody that looked like they were going to be a perfect friend and end up being the worst betrayer we ever experienced. Mm -hmm. So it tells me that my eyes can deceive me, my ears can deceive me, even my emotions can deceive me. And the last thing you and I got to do is we got to visualize the promise. Now this is the most important and profound part of it. God gave me this revelation even this morning reminding me that the reason why some of us don't see what we believe for is because we fail to visualize it in our lives. Amen. Because think about it, if we really believe God for something, and we can almost sense it's coming, how much preparation do we make for it? The old story about the two farmers believing and praying and seeking God for rain, but only one farmer prepared his harvest for rain. The question becomes, are you and I prepared for the overflow of God? Because if we're prepared for the overflow of God, the promises of God, if we're prepared for that which God has promised us, then we will see it manifest in our lives without fail. But maybe you and I are missing it because we're not ready for it and we're not showing God that we're really concerned about it because we have not put any effort in it. You know, just like I was telling the folks on Sunday, I know you're excited that Jesus got up. whoop de do That will mean nothing to you unless you apply it to your life. And you do what it says in Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. And that means the ability to act and do. Jesus got up. That's great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. However, now you got to live the life that he has called you to. Amen. Yes, you are now the hands and feet of God. Jesus has done all the saving he's going to do. Now it's up to you and I to be his hands and his feet in the earth and to make a difference. Get off your knees and get out into these streets and make a difference and watch God bring change in your community. Father, we thank you now. We bless you. We praise you now. God, teach us, your people, how to pray and walk at the same time. God, teach us now how to move in the spirit as we live in the natural. Mm -hmm. Teach us, God, how to make a difference. Yeah. Teach us, God, how to change everything around us, God. How to make that difference, God. Yes, God. Father, we need you now more than ever before. Father, we love you. We pray now that your anointing and your spirit would be found present among us. Now, Father, we love you. We lift you up. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And, beloved, I'm grateful for those of you that have joined us today. I pray that God would bless you, meet every need in your life, and you would be stirred up in the spirit of God. And I pray that today you would do what the Lord has called you to do, and you would visualize the promise to be fulfilled in your life. And I want you to meet us back on the line, beloved, tomorrow morning at 530 a.m. for prayer. Be blessed, beloved, and enjoy your